Welcome back everybody to another video and today we're gonna be looking at this lovely device the Fire TV Cube. Now this is Amazon's flagship streaming device and by flagship I mean it's their top streaming device. It's more powerful than the Fire Stick. It really is a step above. It's a lot closer to the Nvidia Shield than the Fire Stick. I would consider it. It's an amazing device but with that being said, there's still a ton of settings you can change in order to you know, keep yourself private, in order to speed up the device even more, in order to make sure you get the most out of it. Uh, because things aren't always preset at factory how you would like them. And sometimes it can be confusing what settings do what. So I'm gonna take you through everything that you need to change up on your Fire TV Cube. Once again, this is very similar to the Fire Stick video, maybe with a few different changes. But because a lot of people look up Fire Cube and a lot of people want to know directly for their Fire Cube, I want to make sure I do a separate video for it. So if you're new to the channel, make sure you smash that subscribe button right down below here. It really helps the content out a ton. Also give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. It helps with YouTube's algorithm. It also helps get my videos noticed. And then if you could go on Twitter and follow me at upgrade underscore guy, it would really help me out a ton. Let's go ahead and get into today's video. All right, everybody. And now before we get into today's video, I need to tell you about IP Vanish. Now, IP Vanish is a company I work with and they help to keep you private while you're online. It conceals your IP address, which is your online identifier address. It encrypts your connection and it keeps everything you're doing private from online advertisers, from network interference, from your ISP, and also helps with the identity theft. So if you want to get IP Vanish, down below in the description is up to 70% off with a 30 day money back guarantee. It's absolutely insane. Make sure you check it out today. So let's go ahead and get into today's video. There is a lot to get through and we will get through it all. So in order to access your settings menu on your Fire Cube, you just scroll all the way to the right and you'll get to this gear tab. That means settings. There's a lot of different things we can go through here and I'd like to go through them one by one and just talk a little bit about them. Some I'll talk about more, some I'll talk about a little less. It really depends on how important it is and how important I think it is to you as the consumer, as the one using your Fire Cube. So we can start by going to account and profile settings. Now here's where you can sign into your Amazon account and you can deregister your Amazon account. So you can go to click on Amazon account and you can deregister it. This just means you just sign in with another registered account. Now this will delete any official app that you download from the Amazon app store, but it won't delete any side loaded apps. So those apps do stay on regardless of the account that you're signed in on because they're still on the device. Now you can also sync your purchased Amazon content. So let's say that you have a Fire Cube, you're upgrading to a newer one, you can sync your old contact con, uh, content and basically make it the exact same one. Now there is parental controls where you can restrict types of videos, you can restrict uh, what they're watching, which apps they're going into by simply putting in a code. Now this could be pretty helpful uh, if you do have young kids in the house and you're really strict on what you want them to watch. Now your profiles is pretty straightforward. This is just the beginning sign in and you can make as many different profiles as you want. Uh, and this just means everybody has different apps, different preferences inside their profile. Um, and they all have their own little interface, which is really cool. Uh, and then of course, profile sharing, um, which really isn't a big deal. So now if we go to network, this is obviously where you sign into your Wi-Fi, but this will also be where you can put in your ethernet. So once you have your ethernet connected, there should be a pop-up here that shows that you're connected by ethernet. You do have to get an adapter for that. Uh, so keep that in mind as well. Um, other than that, there's not much you need to know about your Wi-Fi section. So going to display and audio, there's some different settings on here that might be available on the Fire Stick um, because of the capabilities of the Fire Cube. Uh, screensavers, I don't really worry about, but if there's something particular you want to put in there, there's actually quite a bit you can do here, including creating like a slideshow style, uh, slide speed, adding a bunch of different, uh, you know, uh, different ones in there. So there's some decent options for that um, and you can really customize it. So kind of cool, nothing I really worry about. 
Let's go to display. Now, video resolution is the first thing you might actually change. Here you can change which setting you want it to be at. So depending on your TV, uh, depending on what you're watching, you might want to change it up. Now, at lower resolutions, I, it won't really help with buffering, um, but you know it depends on, like I said, your TV situation. So you can change it to whatever you'd like here. Now, you can also match your original frame rate. So when matching original frame rate is on, supported apps will use native content frame rate during video playback. Video res resolution must be set to automatic, which we left it. So that's a really good setting to change um, where you can match the original frame rate. Now, color depth depends on your TV. Not every TV is compatible with 12-bit color, but if it is, you're gonna wanna turn it on to get that more vibrant experience. So you can change that depending on your TV and really look it up and make sure that it's compatible with more than eight bits. So that's an important one. Um, color format, not really anything you have to worry about. I would just leave it at automatic. Um, calibrate display. Here you can change up a few things. Adjust, adjust your display so you get a, a more full screen experience. So you can see here we can switch up uh, where the zoom is there. So you can see that block's getting bigger. Now, sometimes people have trouble with this. Sometimes their TV formats it weird. So this will help change it up. But 99% of the time, it does automatically sync to the correct scale. Now, dynamic range settings, uh, you really don't have to change this. So just leave it alone. Uh, just leave that always HDR. So those would be the first things. There are some audio settings you can change here. Um, but nothing most people will change unless you want advanced audio where you can change some volume volume leveling and then also dialogue enhancer. So this boosts the vocals to make it easier to understand the dialogue. So uh, could be helpful depending on your hearing, depending on what you're watching. Um, but this isn't stuff I really switch with too much. Although volume leveler is nice because like it says across different streaming content and apps, the volume level will stay consistent. Sometimes, depending on what you're watching, you know that volume can change quite a bit. So that's a really helpful uh, little audio tip uh, if you need. So we'll get out of here. Um, we're not gonna talk about display mirroring today. It's nothing we really need. So let's go to your applications. Now this is where your installed apps goes. With the Fire Stick, I usually suggest uninstalling every unuseful app, but because the Fire Cube has quite a bit more storage, um, when we go to your manage install apps, you can see you still have 11 gigabytes left and I barely have anything installed on this. So that's gonna be close to what you have with nothing installed. Um, so this means you don't have to go in here and uninstall apps as, un as often because you're gonna have a lot more room on your Fire Stick. But what I do suggest doing if you don't have a one-click cleaner is going in and force stopping the apps uh, every once in a while, any app you don't use, and then clearing the cache. It takes two seconds um, and it does make things a little better. Um, so I usually go through every single app in here once every once in a while if I don't have a cleaner. Uh, well, sorry, we'll get out of film rise. And I force stop them and then clear cache. It takes two seconds. Um, and this way they're not running in the background. And that can really slow down your device having tons and tons of apps running in the background. It's the same if you have your iPhone um, and we swipe up and you see all the different applications you have running. Uh, you don't want those running in the background. That does use up um, the performance of your device. So that's the big thing to know in applications. If you want to uninstall apps, of course do that. Uh, it's not going to hurt if you're not using them, of course. Um, otherwise, Amazon Photos, we're not going to really talk about uh, because it's not really a setting. Uh, and the App Store, I guess if you want to change in-app purchases, so say you have some kids in the house uh, and you don't want them to be able to purchase in-app purchases, you can turn it on. Um, external market links, we're not going to talk about. And automatic updates. Um, some people like having them off. Depending on what you have, you might want to turn them off because it can be annoying um, if something changes and all of a sudden it's updated to a new version and kind of screws you over. So um, updating apps one by one could be the better way if you like to read through what the updates are before they update. Otherwise, your device will go in sleep mode, updates will happen, and you might not know uh, what the update did or what it didn't do. So a uh, decent little tip there. Otherwise, nothing in applications to check out. If we go to equipment control, this is more for audio equipment. So you can set up your equipment. Um, we're not going to do the process today. I might do that another day with some of the Fire TV Cube uh, sound bars that you can get and stuff. I think that'd be cool to do. 
Uh, so I might order one of those in and test it out. Uh, it's a pretty quick process, so uh, it doesn't just have to be the Amazon official, it connects to most different audio equipment. So really awesome that the FireCube offers that. Now, as for remotes and Bluetooth devices, I would say Bluetooth devices is the best one here because you can actually add like PS4 remotes to your Fire Cube, uh, any device that uses uh, Bluetooth. And this means you can turn your cube into a gaming machine. I might do another video about that later, but that's a nice helpful little tip um, if you wanna game on your Fire Cube. So really awesome uh, little trick there. There's not really much else you have to do unless you have to pair or unpair your remote and maybe try to update it. But you can also add a new remote as well. Um, I find these remotes last quite a while, so really good. And then you can see game controllers if you have an Amazon specific one. Um, and you can also pair mobile devices, which is kind of cool. Now, as for Alexa, we're not really gonna talk about Alexa. I don't have one connected. But I would like to do uh, some different videos with Alexa. Um, you can see there's a different couple different features. So we might check that out um, sometime in the near future and do a really cool video on it. Now, if we move to preferences, this is where you're going to see a lot of the different settings that we can change up that really helps things out. So let's go to parental controls. This is the same thing as before. We can turn them on and off. Uh, we're going to leave that. Now, time for privacy settings. You can just turn all these off. There's really no reason to have these on unless you want uh, advertiser specific ads. So if you really want them to track your advertiser ID and really give you preferences on what to buy from Amazon, uh, then they're gonna push you like crazy. I would just turn them off. There's really no benefit to having that running in the background, to having it collecting your data. Um, so data monitoring here is if you wanna see how much you're actually consuming, how much data, and you can also put out uh, your usage and stuff. So you can see how much I've used on each uh, app in the last month. So cool little uh, tracking tool. Now, notification settings, I just turned them off. I don't like having notifications on. Featured content, we won't worry about that. And the rest of this is not needed. Now let's go to My Fire TV. Now this is where there's one setting that you would definitely wanna have on most of the time. Uh, we won't worry about this. Now, if we go into FireCube, it tells you the latest version um, and you can also install updates. I suggest making sure your device is up to date. You just click install update. It will check for the newest update and it will make sure it updates to the newest version. Now storage obviously just shows you the storage. But if we go to developer options, install unknown, unknown apps is definitely one you're going to want to turn on for certain apps such as Downloader, because Downloader allows you to download stuff online. So having it on is useful. Same with File Explorer, because then you can install apps off a USB stick. So two different ones that you can have on. Most other ones you can have off, except if they push updates more often in third-party apps, then you're gonna wanna make sure you have that on because you'll need that on in order to install it. So other than that, guys, there's not really much else to talk about in your Fire TV Cube. That is a lot of different settings to learn about. Now, of course, you can reset your Fire TV Cube to default settings if you're having a lot of issues with it, and that will really help out your experience. So thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button before you leave, and I will check everybody in the next video.